Hi, I'm Jesse Peterson. Welcome to Let's Make Art. If you've been wondering about art journaling or where to start, this is the place to be because we're going to talk about what art journaling is in this beginner series. <laughs> Thanks. So today it's with me, I have Taylor and behind the camera we have Keenan. He I'm likes, just here watching things. Like to cheer us saying on. Saying weird comments sometimes. <laughs> we like that. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what our journaling is and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the brushes I like to use. Cool? Cool. So here's a couple of my art journals. Um, I have all different sizes and different like, pages, but, but I, have, I have some favorite things. Um, this is a little collaging, which is um, a fun technique that you can try in your art journal. This one is um, excerpt from a book. Um, I talked about this before on one of our live videos. This is a, a, a quote from Peter Pan. I love Peter Pan, it's my favorite book. Um, art journaling can be journaling, right? Because, well, art journaling is sometimes hard to define, but you know what art journaling is, I mean, regular journaling is, right? Just writing words. Yes, <laughs> so <laughs> writing words, and then you get to make it visual with art. So in this one, and we'll, um, this will actually be a tutorial that you can watch with me, is all about um, what makes me happy. And all of this is journaling around an image, and that's an art, that can be an art journal image too. Sometimes I like to make um, repetitive marks, and it kind of just helps me calm down and have sort of a meditative experience, and that's nice too. So all, all different types of ways to art journal. Um, <clears throat> I'll go over the types of um, paper and things like that in this series. I'll talk about um, my favorite journal tools, and I'll talk about um, some things that you can have in your art arsenal. <laughs> um, as, you, as you follow along with us, I will introduce you to all kinds of different things. Mixed media is like anything goes. And what I'm hoping is that you'll find things that you like and you'll sort of gather your own um, supplies that you kind of like connect with. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So these can go on over here and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the brushes I like. So I'm going to use some mixed media paper. This is just loose leaf paper to demonstrate some of these brushes. So my favorite go-to brush is this oval mop and it is a three-fourth inch brush. So I'll get it wet, let it sit there for a second. What colors do we use, guys? I got pink, orange, yellow, red. Pink. Pink. All right, let's do pink. You like pink? I like pink. What's your favorite color, Keenan? Uh, sunset orange. Oh, also sunset a little bit orange. of turquoise, but I also love all sorts of colors. But sunset orange is just choice. What's as your they favorite? Say. Sand. Oh, really? Both sunset orange? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. I had it first. <laughs> So I'm just using like basic acrylic paint. You can um, use whatever you got around. But for this, I'm going to water it. What did you call it. that brush? Oh, this is I... an oval mop, three-quarter inch brush. Okay, cool. And what's nice about it is that a mop brush holds a little bit more water in there. So um, like a mop when you're like mopping. So what I like about this brush is that it has a curved edge and it gives you some soft edges if you're just applying paint like this. It's kind of, I might have had a little blue on my brush before because this is looking a little blue, but that's all right. So you can water it down a little more and get more of a wash going with acrylic paint like that if you like. It's really versatile, or you can load it up and use it thick. Um, I just really love it. So I want you- Question. Yeah. Um, is that, since that holds more water, is it like watercolor to where you can have too much water? Oh yeah, that can totally happen. And I'm glad that you mentioned it as if it's like watercolor because we're gonna be doing mixed media stuff here. Um, I wouldn't recommend using your watercolor brushes. You wanna have different brushes. And um, the reason is, is that watercolor pigment isn't as harsh on your brush as some of these other mixed me media materials. Um, so yeah, it acts a little bit different, but if you get a lot of water on it, then you know, it'll be really subtle versus um, not. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here, I'll just get that wet for you and you can try that out. Thank you. And then let's see, we'll do, I use my whole paper here. <laughs> so <laughs> put that on there. Um, 
flat wash is basically the same, except for it has a straight edge. Um, so get more of a straight edge. I'm gonna get some more water in here. So it's nice if you're trying to go for, you know, a more straight edge kind of thing. But you can always play around with your mark making with your different types of brushes, which is nice. So this one, you know, if you wanted to do something like this. That's interesting. I would never think to do that. Yeah? It's so simple. <laughs> so um, the brushes are just a tool for making marks, and you can make marks all kinds of different ways with these kind of brushes. So I'll let you try that one. So each brush makes different marks, helps you with different techniques, is that what you're saying? Just yeah. Makes you more of a versatile. Yes. So this one is a eight. Um, and if you've been watercoloring with Let's Make Art before, you're probably familiar with a round brush. Um, it's nice because if you hold it like this, you can get a thick. There, let me get some. We'll just switch it up, use some red real fast. Get some, get some ketchup in there. <laughs> it totally looks like it ketchup. Does. It I totally know. does. Okay. A little bit more water on there. So yeah, if you push it, you'll get like a thick line, like you do in watercolor. But if you're, well, that was a little bit too much paint. There we go. You can get a thinner line too. And you can practice making marks however you like with this brush. Just experiment, have fun. That's what art journaling is all about. Because this is in our journal, it's for us. We're not trying to do something for a get. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so since these paints are harder on your brushes than other mm -hmm. paints like watercolor, does that mean you have to replace your brushes more often? Sometimes. If you take care of it and you don't let the paint dry in your brush, then your brush will last longer. So while you're working and your paint is wet, you're fine, but you don't want to like take your brush and set it down with paint in it because it'll dry and then then you just have to throw that brush away. Um, this is a smaller size of that um, oval mop brush, and you can get some neat marks Jesse, with it. Jesse, did you mention what brand brush these were? Oh, these are all Princeton Select, and they're, they're for mixed media. Thank okay. you for asking. So that one's kind of... Um, this is a filbert, and it's not like the mop brush where it has a lot of um, water in it. It doesn't hold the water as much, but it is a nice shape that I like messing around with. It's called a filbert brush? Yeah, filbert. That's great. <laughs> Isn't that cool? What did you say that was used for? Um, this one is more, see, and you can still get a straight line out of this one if you like. I just wanted to show you a couple of different ones, and I'll tell you... My, one, my favorite is that oval mop brush for sure, especially when I'm using watered down acrylic or if I'm using gouache. I just love what I can get out of that brush. Um, so let's see. And then of course your rounds come in different sizes and watercolor. Um, a lot of people use the round two and the round six. This is a round one for like fine detail. Um, I don't use this a lot because in art journaling because it's mixed media, I like to use a pen. I feel like I have more control with that. But there are times if I'm trying to get a specific mark that maybe I wouldn't get with a pen, but I'd use this. Can you bring your paper a little closer to you? Yeah, like this. Is that better? And then to the right. And then do some more small marks real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you can obviously paint and do things like this. Um, so is that the one you would use for lettering or do you, when you do like an acrylics, because it seems like you can stack acrylic on acrylic, mm -hmm. do you use a pen or anything? Um, I like using pens, but sometimes this is a great brush for, um, for, for lettering. For the word part of your journaling? Yeah. You know? Did you use that to letter the Peter Pan quote that you showed? I can't remember. I think I did. I think I did. Yeah, good question. That was a lot of paint on there, sorry. <laughs> okay, these other two brushes that I'm gonna show have different, um, what do you call this part? 
bristles? Yes, thank you, Keenan. Sometimes <laughs> just can't remember. Um, these are more natural um, bristles and they hold up to um, rougher media. Um, and so I like to use this with gesso. So. What is gesso? Good question. Gesso is like paint, except for it's a primer and it has more of a chalky like um, substance in it. And what it does, what its purpose is to seal a substrate. So a substrate is whatever you're painting on, whether it be paper or canvas. So <clears throat> sometimes when we're doing mixed media, you're gonna you're gonna use different layers, collaging, painting, like we were showing, and um, Thinner paper doesn't always hold up to that. It'll, it will just fall apart, get crinkled, and get all weird on you. So using gesso is a really great way to um, seal your substrate. And I'll talk more about this in another video, but it's also really great to get some texture on your paper. And then when you add other medium to it, it's nice. So yeah, if you're using a journal that the paper is not like true mixed media paper and you just want to give it some, um, some more life as far as like being able to hold up to stuff, then this gesso brush is a great one. I would not recommend using your favorite brushes that you like to paint with, with the gesso. Have a separate brush that you just use for gesso because it's kind of rough on a brush. I'll let you try that. Can you combo it's that different. with colors? You can. So you can tint gesso any color. Oh yeah, this probably doesn't show up very well here. It huh? doesn't. I, that, that's what made me think of it. I was like, oh, that'd yeah. be interesting if you can do that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can tint gesso whatever color you want. So you just add a little bit of your paint to it and then you can see it. So I can demo that here now. Um, gesso comes in um, black as well. So it's kind of nice if you already want your paper to be black, then you can, you know, start out with black. This is like black gesso there, all here. So yeah, it just strengthens your paper, you know. Um, how would you wash your brushes after using gesso? Well, so I will wash my, my brush, that's such a good question, um, in the sink to get most of the gesso off. If I'm just doing a little bit of gesso like this, I can use my paint water to clean it for the most part, but see there's still gesso in there, mm -hmm. so it's really like you gotta go wash it out. Yeah, so the other brush that I like is this one. It is nice to use with if you're gonna go back over a painting with gesso just because you want some white or some more texture but you're not trying to get like, you know, big swatches of it, then I really like this brush as well. And it has that same um, sort of natural bristle to it. Mm -hmm. And you'll get some neat marks with it. I'm gonna go ahead and use it with acrylic paint on here. This Are is probably not dry yet, but. Well, I guess you're showing now. It was just a little low, so I, I don't know if we could see it. Okay. But it's okay, it looks great. You're, you're doing a great job. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is, um, a natural brush and it can hold up to some gesso if you want to use um, a more of a detailed sort of texture with that um, as well. So if you have acrylic paint down and then you put gesso on top of it, it like it doesn't dry clear, it'll dry white? No, it, so the white gesso dries white. I'm so glad you asked that. And then there's clear gesso that dries clear, which I didn't mention, and then there's black. And then you can always tint your gesso with the paint that you're using. While we were waiting for this to dry, Taylor had a good question. Um, I asked if you have to wait for gesso to dry before you can paint on top of it. Yes. So once it's dry, then it really seals the paper. If you start painting on it before, then the paint kind of mixes with the gesso, and that's okay too, but here we probably want to wait for it to dry. And if you look, Taylor's isn't shiny anymore, and it's dry. Mine is still a little shiny, and it's not quite dry. Like if you touch it, it's a little tacky. But what's cool about using a dry gesso is, oh, let me look, grab, I'll use this brush, it's fine. This is another mop brush. All right, this one, if we go over it, you can start seeing the texture of the gesso that's there, so. That's cool. What? Yeah. yeah. So I'll do it too on mine. This is starting, it's dry enough. See that? So you, that tooth of the, the gesso really like starts to become part of your piece because that texture is coming through. It gives and it some teeth. It gives it some, it's really interesting. Yeah. Like the, yeah. I don't know I don't, why they say the tooth of the, but it's, a, it's, what, it's what they say. I think what they mean is that it gives it some bite that grabs onto whatever you're putting on top of that. You it's a bit I mean? bitey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Anyway, isn't that so fun to see it like come? Yeah. Oh yeah, cool. and I'm loving this texture that you got there. Look yeah, at that, like, isn't that neat? So for that, I don't know if that's something you usually do, but um, this was partially dry. And so the wet parts I moved around, so then it kind of made that cool like bubble thing. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it so much. And I love that you were exploring here. It's so good because art journaling is all about exploring. It's all about trying new things and, you know, using these um, supplies that we have in a different way. I, I like that. This could be a page in your art journal just like this. So if I say I really like the way this looks and to make it the art journaling aspect, what do I write on it to not ruin it? <laughs> okay, one, you're not gonna ruin it. Two, you did the air quotes like art journaling, like there's a specific like way to do it or there's like a way that it, it is in order for it to be art. And it, it's, there's not, it's, it's yours. It's whatever you wanna do with it, whatever you're feeling. Sometimes I'll take a page and I'll just let it sit because I'm not sure what I wanna do with it just yet. Sometimes I know right away, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this cool thing that I heard the other day. What I love is that no one else sees the world like you see the world and no one else can tell the stories like that you have to tell but you and so it's all about what you bring to it and what you want to make it because that's what our journaling is it's whatever you want to make it and we have fun we experiment we explore and we learn things by making art that's what we do love it Thank you so much for being here and Thank doing this you. with me. Um, it was a lot of fun. Our next um, episode of this beginner series will be all about my favorite writing tools for art journaling. So see you then. Thanks.